I just wanted to give a quick tutorial on how I use MakeHuman and Mixamo and Unreal and all that together. There are already some other tutorials for this stuff online, but I wanted a process where I could still keep facial morph targets, I guess, so that I could have facial animations. So I'm just going to show that real quick. I'm going to gloss over some of these things because you can find more specific information on other stuff. So yeah, start with MakeHuman. Oh, sorry. I freaked out my computer. I use this skeleton, the CMUMB. That's the one I've had the most luck with. As for geometry, I get rid of the hide faces under clothes. That way there's just a full body, so... But I will have to change things in Blender to make it so it's not sticking through like that. <laughs> but yeah, you can do what you want with that. Actually, wait. No. This, this actually just puts like a sort of filter on that won't actually work in the engine. So if you want to get rid of the mesh under that, you have to do that in Blender as well. Okay, so... Uh, when I export, I use the Make Human Exchange. There's information on their site about how to get that plugin into Blender. It's like, it's not built into Blender anymore, it's like a plugin that you put in. So then when I've got my person, I just find a place to put them. Export them. Okay. So, oh, this is where I was, I was testing with this. Okay. So yeah, if you get that plugin, you'll have the option to import the make human exchange files. Then I want to override the exported data, and I want to turn on face shapes and face shape drivers. I don't want masks because once again that won't do anything in the engine. And I don't want subdivision surface because that won't exist in the engine either. And if you try to apply it then it like gets rid of the rigging. It's really weird so. Then I want to add the rig here, just the exported one. Okay. There are some nicer rigs that have like cool little grabbers and stuff to make it easier to move, but once you put that into Unreal, all the bones are sort of unhooked and it's weird. Like, that's what happened with the last character that I made in this game, actually, which I still haven't made a new version of him yet. <laughs> Anyways. You can change whatever you want here to make things not stick through each other and stuff like that. I've had some trouble with deleting parts of the mesh. It works most of the time, but occasionally you import it into Unreal and it's all distorted. So just save your file and try again if it doesn't work. Also you can export... Okay, wait, let me show you. So I'll just like, for this one I'll do it simple, export just the whole thing together as an FBX. Get rid of add leaf bones, I'm not sure if that does anything, but that's what I've seen. Get rid of apply modifiers, because if, if there was anything on there you don't want to apply it or it will... Actually, you don't want to apply modifiers because that will get rid of your um, skeleton, pretty much. With animation, that's not relevant yet, because I'm not exporting an animation right now, but when you do, you want to get rid of all actions, or like every single little change you've made while animating will export, and it's a big mess. And then if you want to, you could take, say, his clothes and his body and select the skeleton and then do export selected objects. If you want to keep them separate so you can like change out clothes and stuff like that in your game, then that's what you do. And also, we need to check before I go any further, make sure we did all this right. So in here, in the MX x2 runtime tab you'll see all these face shapes this is from the drivers that we turned on 
So it's got things like the brows. Yay, they're moving. And Bisamese, these are like mouth shapes for speaking. So I use a program called Papagayo, which is free to make files. I think you can find more information about that there, but pretty much you just put a sound file, you write in what it is, and then you just drag around the sounds to align how you want. Sometimes you have to write something kind of weird to make it look right, you know, like leave out some of the letters and stuff, but uh, I have a file saved here. It's for some reason it's just this mouth opening and closing. I don't remember what I made it for, but gives you an idea. So when you import these files, dot dat, that's what you want to save as in here. It will just automatically have all these set and keyframed. So if you go to animation mode, you'll see that all these keyframes are here. I like to view this NLA editor. Because then I can go here and say, there's my animation. Also, you can make custom animations. So I'll show that here. You know, whatever. Oh, I forgot to keyframe. That's important. I just use lock rot. And then we can go here. <laughs> I keep forgetting the keyframe. There's a little animation. Save that as well. And then we can export. You can export it to a separate thing if you want. I just tend to just save it over and over on the same file. I believe if you're just doing bone animations, you can just export the skeleton if you want, if you want, so you don't have to worry about the mesh when you go into Unreal. But since I have facial animations, I want to export the mesh as well, because that's where the facial animations will be stored. So I'm just going to leave it on exporting everything. Let me check that I still have these settings right. Yep. So now that I have that, we can go here. We can take our new guy. I believe I have things in Unreal set right now to not import materials or textures, but I think if I do, they should be there. If not, there's places where Make Human stores all those textures that it makes, and you can you can get those files and use those. Oh, hey, it worked. Got textures. So yeah, it's still sticking through because I didn't fix anything. But that's okay. Let's make sure the blend shapes still work. Oop. Yep. This eyebrow raised. And then, since I keep my skeleton the same name when I'm exporting animations, I just make a new folder. Because if you put it in the same folder, it'll just re-import. It won't do anything. Oh, in fact, I realized that I already had the animations there when I exported it, so they already exist here. So... It's kind of irrelevant right now, but I'll show you anyways. I make a new folder. I drag in that same skeleton. Okay. Then I just set it to that so it knows. I don't remember if import mesh is important there. I think it is to get those animations still, but I, I just delete it after I do this. So I don't have... A bunch of copies of the mesh. Yeah, so you can get rid of that. But now you have your animations. So there's one with the mouth where it's just flapping open and closed. And 
There's the one we made of his leg moving. <laughs> okay, so the only other thing is I use this for a lot of animations because I can't really animate. <laughs> you just upload your character, it'll automatically see the rig. I did try this as well with Manuel Bastioni, I think it's how it's pronounced, which is a plugin that's sort of built into Blender, which is pretty cool for making people. It's kind of it's a lot like Make Human, but there's their rigs have some extra bones, which is kind of weird, and so this uh, Mixamo doesn't doesn't recognize it. It doesn't know how to take it, and it errors out. I think. It might be possible to delete some of those bones and then get it working, but I haven't experimented with that too much. Anyways, so yeah, got animations. <laughs> and yes, you can do whatever with him. And then you just download it without the skin, FBX format. This one, it won't get confused on the skeleton, so you can stick it wherever you want. Standing up. And it just it usually knows exactly which skeleton it belongs to already. And then, oop, there you go. There's a Mixamo animation. That's the sort of method I use to get facial animations and custom animations and facial st and Mixamo stuff in there. I want to show you one more thing actually, which is, I think, at least, yeah. For some reason, there are no eyes closing type animations, I mean type movements, in built into these Make Human guys. So I generally make those myself. So if you want to add blend shapes to your dude, you go here. I, th I think there are also more detailed tutorials on this because I know I didn't figure this out myself. But So I'll just go here and add something like, you know, you can call eyes closed or something. Pretty much the important thing is that you select on this one when you're editing it. It's so like if you're editing the main mesh, make sure you're selected here. If you want to edit this blend shape, then you select it. And then I just go here and grab. I usually do something pretty lazy and sloppy, but yeah. So I use this connected thing because it makes it stretch out all nice. <laughs> Then I can just, oops, that is way too big of an area. Then I can say SZ. And now his eyes closed. So, when I go out of edit mode and I say eyes closed, there you go. Yeah, so do that before you import your mesh into Unreal. And then you will be able to close his eyes. Sorry about that. Like two projects open right now. I usually also do that with um, looking around and stuff. I usually switch out the eye meshes with those unreal ones so you can get the nice looking eyes. But yeah, that's all up to you if you want to do that. Okay. Let's see if he has his eyes closed option now. Oop. Yay! <laughs> okay, so there you go. I hope that helps someone. <laughs>